while before Necromedes the Thrice Reborn, Arc Mage, Builder the Great Cigarette of Lux, the first and greatest necromancer. Listen as I review epic tales of fantastical adventures from across the multiverse. Be sure to hit follow to bind your soul to my dark purpose. When I hit 1,000 followers bound to me, I will unleash the power of demonetization upon this world. Anal Nothrock, Uthas Bethud, Dothiel Dienve. Anal Nothrock, Uthas Bethud, Dothiel Dienve. Anal Nothrock, Uthas Bethud, Dothiel Dienve. A review of A Spell for Chameleon by Piers Anthony. A Spell for Chameleon takes place in Xanth, a magical place that just happens to be the same size and shape as Florida. Its forests are magical and semi-sentient and full of pun-based magical plants and creatures. Human society is medieval-based and is ruled by a magician king. Xanth is linked to the normal world of Mundania, which is much larger and similar if not identical to Earth. Wisely, Xanth is ruled by a king that must be a human man of magician-level talent. Unwisely, they often scorn evil magicians, the best ones. A Spellful Chameleon is a very oddly put-together novel. The hero, Trent the Evil Magician, doesn't make a physical appearance until halfway through the book, a very interesting choice. Meanwhile, we must make do with following Bink, a person without apparent magic. Every human in Xanth has magical ability or talent. These range from trivial talents like changing the color of your urine, all the way to magician-level talents like weather control or transformation. Bink is troubled by his lack of magic. His youthful enemies include Zinc, Jama, and Potifer, who get intoxicated by local berries and use their minor magical talents to tease and endanger him. It's implied that they get drunk and mate with centaurs. Truly, these are proto-Florida men that we read about in newspapers. Xanth men kick it up to a whole new level. I'm sure the local newspapers post headlines like, Local Xanth man flies magic carpet into castle to protest nymph rights. <laughs> Any resident of Xanth who does not manifest and demonstrate an ability by the age of 25 are banished to Mundania. That's a problem for Bink as his 25th birthday is only a month away. He goes out to seek the good, blah, magician Humphrey to see if he has any hidden magical talent. Bink manages to blunder through Xanth on his quest, all the while being sexually attracted to just about every feminine creature he comes across. Centaurs, dryads, three different human village girls, evil sorceresses, and mermaid. He comes very close to meeting with dirty, filthy harpies and a love spring. I won't tell you what he does with a cockatrice. <laughs> the story only really gets going after Bink meets the hero of the story, Trent the Evil Magician. Trent has assembled an army to conquer Xanth, a worthy purpose for any evil magician. In the past, he turned whole armies into turnips. Personally, I just use a death spell and reanimate them as zombies. It really raises their spirits. Get it? <laughs> I'm hilarious. Plot. Five out of five skulls. Very well crafted. All the threads came together in a satisfying, if tragic, conclusion. Blood and gore. Three out of five skulls. With so much potential from dragons, giants, zombies, sea monsters, and more, the most vicious monsters are called wiggles. Worms that drill holes straight through you. At one point, a giant, wounded by wiggles, is mistakenly burned alive by magical fire provided by a transformed bink. Pretty metal. Magic system, five out of five skulls. Really, each talent has its own magic system, the limits of which are crafted expertly. Also, the entirety of Xanth is a magical ecosystem, which is fascinating. World building, five out of five skulls. It sustained 41 sequels. Bonus, half a skull for the idea of humanity being threatened by dilution due to interbreeding with magical animals. If the average man is at all like Bink, it's a serious threat. <laughs> Total, five skulls. A spell for chameleon is officially animated.